In this video, we'll be looking at this AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 outdoor access point from Wavlink. They did send this in before review, but as always, that does not affect our opinion in any way. This is just the box that it comes in, as you can see, pretty large box, and then all the accessories and the unit itself. Let's start with the unit itself here. As I said, it's a pretty decent sized unit. Uh, that's why the box is pretty big as well. Um, so of course, it's about the size of an indoor router maybe, so that kind of makes sense. But yeah, this is the unit itself. On the back here, we do have some uh, holes for mounting it if you want to mount it via screws. And on the bottom here, we do have an ethernet port for of course connecting it via power and ethernet. And then we have a pair and reset switch button here as well. Most of the other accessories we have here are just for mounting it. So we do have two adhesive strips. So if you want to just mount it with adhesive, definitely the quickest way, then you are able to do that. Nice that those are included. Then we do have some screws and anchors for of course using those mounting holes that I showed you at the back. Then we also have this plug here, which will screw into the bottom after you put in the ethernet cable, which will help maintain that waterproofing. We also have some manuals, of course, and then a positioning card, which will help you drill the holes. We also have these metal ties. If you wanted to mount it to a pole or a fence or something like that, then you're able to use these ties as well. So a bunch of different mounting options. You can mount it via the adhesive, via the screws, or via these ties. So nice that all those are included. But then we have an ethernet cable, of course, the power cable, and then we have this little adapter here, which will allow you to put the power cable and the ethernet cable into the bottom here, and then does have power over ethernet. So you will just have the one ethernet cable going into the unit, and that will provide both power and internet, which is really cool. So part of the installation is installing this waterproof cap I was showing you earlier. Essentially what this does is this kind of goes in the bottom here and then holds the cable, of course, which prevents water from just kind of going directly into the port. So very important to install this if you're going to be using it outdoors just to make sure it is actually waterproof. So we'll go ahead and unscrew this piece here. And then this Ethernet cable goes through that cap here. Then we can take out this rubber piece here and the kind of seal. And then that just clips around the Ethernet cable itself. So it does have a little slit here, which is nice. So we go ahead and put it on like that, and then we can put the cable through here, put the rubber piece back in the bottom like so, fit it properly, and then we'll go ahead and screw this cap back on. Now the Ethernet cable is through here, and you can see there's a pretty nice seal at the bottom here. Not perfect, but definitely a lot better than having it just kind of exposed like this. So then you can go ahead and plug in the Ethernet uh, cable here to the bottom, and then finally you can go ahead and just screw this cap on. So. Again, much better than not having any cap at all. It is a little bit exposed, so there's not a perfect seal around the actual cable, of course. But again, it's really a lot better, and it will also prevent any kind of bugs or other grime and stuff getting in there. So you do want to make sure you install that cap if you're going to be using it outdoors. Once you have the device plugged into power, it's pretty easy to set up. The first thing you do is simply connect to the Wi-Fi network that it gives off. And then one of the first decisions you'll have to make is which mode you want to set it up in. So there's a few different modes here. Repeater mode it will connect wirelessly to your existing network and it will kind of bounce that signal around. It does increase range a little bit, but I found it did not increase speed. So it's not the best mode to use, but it is an option. AP mode is the second best mode in my opinion, and this will require a physical connection from the router to the access point. So you will need to run an ethernet cable outdoors if you're gonna be using it in this mode. But I would say it's the second best mode in terms of speed and coverage. Both repeater mode and AP mode will put out kind of separate wireless Wi-Fi networks, so you will have to actually physically switch between the Wi-Fi networks if you're going outside or something to get those additional speeds. Ideally, your phone will switch automatically, but it's something to keep in mind that you will actually have a separate Wi-Fi network. It'll be like your Wi-Fi name plus EXT or something like that, um, but you will need to actually connect to a separate Wi-Fi network if you're using it in repeater mode or AP mode. Mesh mode is definitely the best mode to use, but this does require you to have an existing Wavlink router that supports their mesh technology. So using this mode will require a specific router, but the nice part about mesh mode is it does have the advantage of a higher speed and better coverage, but without actually changing the Wi-Fi network. So you will be kind of using that same Wi-Fi name throughout your whole house, and it will just kind of extend the range and speed of it. So that's definitely the best mode to use. It's a super convenient. You won't have to worry about switching networks and losing internet while you switch and things like that, but of course it will require existing hardware. So we're just gonna be setting it up in AP mode today. And once you've made the decision, it is very easy to set up. You essentially type in your new Wi-Fi network and password, and then it will kind of go through this process of setting it up. And then after a few minutes, it's already ready for you. So it is a very easy setup, thankfully, and doesn't require too much effort or configuration. So since we are using it in AP mode, we do have this cable going into the router. This is the power cable going into the wall. And then this is the single ethernet cable going into the bottom of the unit here. So again, that's just because we're using it in AP mode. If you're using it in repeater mode, you don't need to connect the cable to your router. So it's a lot easier to position though you will experience slower speed at the downside. So with my current setup, as you can see here, it is actually indoors, which is a little bit odd, a little bit counterintuitive for an outdoor access point. However, it is right near a window, so I do experience much faster speeds outside, even having it just right near the window here. So while my main router is in the same room, I do actually get much faster speeds connecting to this Wavlink router just because it is near the window. And of course, I would get even faster speeds if I were to position this farther away from the router and really put it outside like you're supposed to. So where you're able to position this really just depends on your setup. I don't have any way to get an ethernet cable outside, unfortunately. So again, that is definitely 
definitely the ideal way to do it. If you do have an existing outdoor connection or if you have some way to run an ethernet cable outside, then it's definitely worth putting this outside and putting it kind of uh, far away, like on a shed or something outside. But just given how my setup is, I did have to mount it indoors, unfortunately. So again, I still get the benefits from it being near a window and it is faster than using my actual router, but it's a little bit odd having an outdoor extender mounted inside. In terms of the speed test, I'm standing out in my driveway, so this is connected to my main router. I get about 360 down and 650 up, which is still pretty good, of course. But then when I connect to the Wavlink access point, I do get much faster speeds. The download speed is about 480. Upload is pretty similar, around 670, but still a noticeable difference in the range goes all the way to my street, which it did not previously. So overall, this is a very solid product. I would say for most people, it's probably not worth using it in repeater mode. So you'll really only want this if you can use it in AP mode or even better in mesh mode. But in that AP mode, there's definitely a noticeable performance boost. Like I said, I'm even using it indoors near window and my coverage outside is still noticeably better than my existing router. So especially if you have the ability to run a wired connection outside into your yard and attach this outside, then it will definitely be an even more noticeable performance increase. So your results will definitely depend on how you're able to set it up, but if you're able to use it in one of the ideal setups, it's definitely a noticeable difference in both coverage and speed.